This video has been sponsored by myself. Windows 10 and 11 retail keys are still $12.50 only. And I would like to thank everyone who has subscribed to me in the last couple of weeks. It helped me out a lot. So if you like the content and you are still not subscribed, please consider to do so. Hello and welcome to part one of this Fallout 4 2022 Ultimate Graphics Tutorial. My name is Brett Caliber and you are watching the guided video series which belong to this 2022 Ultimate Graphics Tutorial hosted on Nexus Mods. So if you by chance have stumbled upon this video randomly on YouTube somewhere or on my channel, you can just follow the link in the video description to get into this Nexus Mods page. So what we're going to do in this 2022 Ultimate Graphics tutorial, we are going to install a lot of mods which really help uh, making our Fallout 4 look absolutely great for 2022 standards because uh, yeah, the last time I did do a tutorial for Fallout 4 was in 2016, but I have to say I wasn't really pleased with the end result back then. But now the last year, 20, uh, last year 2021, the end of that year, I finally really started getting into modding Fallout 4 because I really wanted to play the game, but I think the animations and graphics were just way outdated. So yeah, for that, I had to deep dive myself into Fallout 4 because originally I am a Skyrim modder. And if you are, if you want to mod your Skyrim special edition or anniversary edition, you can also follow my guide for Skyrim. So uh, before we start, yeah, I wanted to point out for Fallout 4, there are a lot of similarities. If you are uh, experienced with Skyrim modding, an example, Mod Organizer 2, uh, which we're going to use in this tutorial works the same way. All the script extenders, texture mods, EMBs, they share a lot of similarities with Skyrim. So that's a great thing. The only thing is that I had to do a lot of troubleshooting in the last couple of months because I found some great mods, but yeah, some didn't really work out of the box. And there are some things which were a little bit differently than modding Skyrim. So that's, um, yeah, I want to prevent you for giving you headaches while trying to troubleshoot things because uh, I already did, did that for you. So you can just follow along with these video tutorials. So first of all, here you can find the mod page uh, on Nexus Mods. As you can see here, it here says your mod is currently not published. It's also at version 1.0, uh, but once this is being released and once you're watching this right now, it should have version one at one being fully tested and uh, everything should work fine. So first of all, I would recommend if you watch the quality, you can of course watch the videos here, but the screenshots already say a lot about the quality and yeah, you know, of the textures of the lighting, the EMB. And I think because I've, I've tried a lot of graphic EMB mods, that this combination is just the best for me personally, but I will also explain a little bit what I mean with that personally and what you can do if you, you know, maybe you have an honor EMB in mind or another graphics mod, whatever. We will get there uh, on this way. So yeah, this is the Fallout 4 2022 Ultimate Graphics tutorial. I would say let's jump right into it and um, start with the well, let's just start from the start, shall we not? So here you see an introduction. As I say here, please click on the top of the screenshots to get a better view on the texture quality and result videos. System requirements, the first important part. Um, yeah, you need a quite a decent system if you want to have good 60 FPS, maybe even a little bit better than Skyrim Special Edition. But you definitely want to have at least a yeah, more recent uh, HI5 with decent clock speed or, um, or better. And of course, 16 gig RAM, which I think everybody has nowadays with a decent rig and at least a GTX 1080 Ti. And um, I really, really want to address this because, yeah, I see a lot of questions from people who are asking me, can I run this with a poor PC? I would not do that if I were you. If you really want to have maximum quality and good solid 60 FPS, please stick to at least these specs. I know it's not a great time to upgrade uh, GPU especially. So, yeah, you know, 
I mean, you can always try, but if you really want to be sure you have at least 60 FPS, really make sure you have these system specs. And I'm currently running Windows 11 and I also tested on Windows 10, that works fine. Make sure this guide is mostly focused on graphics and texture quality. And uh, if you have any other gameplay mods, usually you can just add them on top of this graphics mod uh, list at the end. So if you are, uh, if you have other mods you would like to use big gameplay overalls, usually they are just one to one compatible. You can just throw them on this graphics uh, mod list. So yeah, that, sh that should be fine. So you have a little bit of an idea what we're going to do. Mostly it is graphics related um uh well, well, re regarding this tutorial so a little bit the other about me information and then we will start with the tutorial so here are the things we're going to do in the next couple of videos first essential tools and setup setting up a foundation to start actually modding then we're going to the essential mods and fixes so yeah like the like it says here uh then we go we're going to start with the with the real big graphic overhauls and that's are usually EMBs, reshade and uh, big texture overhauls then we have some miscellaneous texture mods from the player and creature mods well i say miscellaneous but actually it are quite a lot of mods uh because this also includes weapons and armors because i think weapons and armors really makes a big difference with uh over the last couple of years um yeah with uh with, with all the great animations because i think the modded weapons look way better than the vanilla fallout 4 weapons more realistic better animations and uh, better texture quality so here uh, can i support thank you if you really like the tutorial and you would like to do a small donation of a dollar or something you can do that here greatly appreciate it of course not necessarily needed but um yeah if you want to do so here you can find the link and if you also want to really help me but don't want to spend any money, then please consider subscribing on my YouTube channel. Or if you go all the way to the top, click on endorse this. Uh, it's not here, right? Yeah, here, endorse this mod list. That also helps me out a lot. So you can do that. And then I would say let's start with the tutorial with the essential tools and setup. So I did create this tutorial, but I will check with you from time to time what we need to do uh, because yeah, I can't really remember everything myself, of course. So that's, I would say, let's just follow the tutorial along and I will explain you what to do. So here, this is the most boring, but also the most essential part. Yeah, of course we need to have a clean, stable foundation and we have to be absolutely sure that we do not have any leftovers from other mods, which could interfere with our modding process. We definitely don't want that. So um, the good thing is if you never ever modded your Fallout 4 and you're just starting completely clean and new with modding, that's fantastic because then that means you can now skip to this timestamp in the video to uh, start the, yeah, the rest of the steps for modding Fallout 4. If you are like me and you did mod your Fallout 4 um, before with an example Nexus Mod Manager, Vortex or Mod Organizer, you now need to delete everything first properly and then later we are going to continue with mod organizer 2 because i think that's just the best mod manager even better than vortex because the way you can handle and manage mods with mod organizer is just fantastic so what i'm going to do now is go to my mod organizer 2 which i did use for fallout 4 and i'm going to delete all the mods it's quite a pain to do that, but hey, yeah, it is what it is. I'm going to show you guys how to mod. So that means I need to make, do the good example of deleting all the mods myself. So I just press Control A, press the delete button, press yes. It will probably give some errors on the way. So if you have that as well, feel free to just acknowledge these errors like this one. It will probably happen a lot of times. So delete all the mods from your mod manager. In example, Nexus Mod Manager, Vortex or Mod Organizer. And yeah, do that now. Then I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right. Once that is done, you can close Mod Organizer or your mod modding tool. Let's see. What do we need to do more? We need to also uninstall the game. Um... So I would like to point out if you're using Mod Organizer and you just installed it not portable, there is a big chance uh, the, there are files still saved here in your uh, app data lo local folder Mod Organizer. So make sure you delete that because these are actually the installed mods. And if you're going to reinstall Mod Organizer, there's a big chance that it will just um, override these incorrect mods. So make sure you delete them as well. 
For the setup mods you want to keep, sure, feel free to save them somewhere if you want to install them later on. But for now, make sure you have this cleaned up. Then, uh, let's see, we need to uninstall Fallout 4 first. And you can do that by going to Steam. Go to Library, go to Fallout 4. Where is it? Here it is. I could see. Can I use something from here? Yeah. And manage and uninstall. I would like to point out Fallout 4 is a little bit bigger than Skyrim Special Edition. The full game with all DLC is around 70 or 80 gigs already. So if you have a slow internet connection, I can imagine that you don't want to do this and maybe make it vanilla again um, with, with, with other methods by like deleting some files and verify integrity of this game in Steam. Whatever, you know, just do that. I have a pretty fast internet connection, so I'm just going to simply uninstall everything. Also, since I'm lazy and I don't want to do all the steps to make it vanilla again. So I would recommend to do that as well. But um, I can imagine if you have a slow internet connection, you want to do this maybe overnight or something like that. So yeah, I just want to point it out just before you blindly go to uninstall Fallout 4 to please check your internet connection if it is fast enough to do this or you just prefer to Google a little bit on how to make it vanilla again. Uh, because in Skyrim Special Edition, it was a little bit uh, different because it was way easier for some reason to, to find some info on how to make it vanilla again. But Fallout 4, I couldn't really find that info. Then once that's been uninstalled, you want to go to your Fallout 4 main game folder and you want to delete everything which is still left here. If there are some screenshots in here, you can keep them, of course. But for the rest, all the other stuff is usually from mods, EMBs, etc, etc. So make sure you delete that. And then uh, also you want to go to your Fallout 4 ini files and you can find that in your My Documents folder. So you go to your users, your username, My Documents, My Games, and then find Fallout 4 and delete everything from here as well. Also for here, um, if you're not using the Steam version, and I'm not sure if there is actually a, uh, a non-Steam version, but if not, make sure to keep a backup, to create a backup of your save games. That's important. If you're using Steam, don't worry, you can delete everything since Steam will automatically backup these things in the cloud anyway. So that's great. Let's then, once we've done that, let's see what our guide says. So make sure and install properly. We want to uninstall all the mods. That's what we've done right now. We want to go to Steam and uninstall and our my games, um, yeah, my our, my documents to delete it. any files. Here also I stated, if you don't want to completely uninstall your Fallout 4, you can Google how to make Fallout 4 vanilla again. I wanted to actually include a link on how to do this, like I said, but I couldn't really find a more simple link to check these files, uh, which were not, not modded. So the easiest way for me would be just like I did uh, now is uninstall the game, delete everything which was left in the folder and reinstall it again. So. I'm going to reinstall it now, install. Um, yeah, recommended of course to do it on an SSD if you have the space and then let's just wait before it finishes installing. Let's see if we can do something while we are waiting. Hmm, I would say let's just leave it uh, for now. Let's just have the game installed and then I'll see you guys in a little bit, depending of course on your internet speed. All right, once Fallout 4 finally finishes the installation again, click on play and the launcher will first start. Then press options, press ultra and select your appropriate resolution. I'm playing on 1440p resolution, so I'm going to uh, set that resolution. Now click on advanced and yeah, a lot of these settings uh, are also in the Beth Ini uh, program, which modifies Ini, our Ini files. So we're going to change that a little bit later. But for now, just make sure everything is on. Um, a thing I would to switch off is weapon debris if you have an NVIDIA RTX card, so a ray tracing card, because else you will get crashes to desktop. Even while we're going to install a patch later on, to be completely safe, I would just turn it completely off. If you do not have an NVIDIA ray tracing card, an RTX card, then you can uh, yeah, select Ultra or just switch it off as well. So that's okay, that's okay. What you want to do now is play the game, start it up at least once. Um, you can do that by, I would not load a current modded save game if you have it, or if you have never modded your Fallout 4 before, then you can load any save game you like, but else if you have a modded save game, you want to start a new game and just, yeah, you know, just uh, skip everything. And once you are in the character creation, you can just 
uh, exit the game, Alt F4 to go back to the desktop. It's just that the game did start at least once, so we have our ini files. So I would say let's do that right now, and then I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, now that is done, let's continue with the tutorial. Um, so what we want to do now is we want to create a couple of folders and to do that is uh, let's see where we um, bu bu first you want to create a shortcut to your fallout for main game folder and you can find that in your steam library steam apps common fallout 4 so this is your steam library where you have installed fallout 4 make sure you have a shortcut to the fallout 4 main game folder and while you are there what you can do is create a new folder there and uh, name it something like modding tools and you want to have a shortcut. Let's see, shortcut to there as well. So name this Fallout for modding tools, in example. All right, great. And let's put that on our desktop. So these two shortcuts you should now have to the Fallout for main game folder and the Fallout for modding tools. And you also want to create a folder somewhere uh, doesn't matter where, where you have enough disk space to uh, save actual files, um, enough files, so around 60 gigs or something. And you want to create these following folders in there. So what's easier, the easiest way to do that is by just copy pasting here these titles. Uh, so create a folder somewhere, doesn't really matter. Uh, make sure you have enough disk space and create these five folders because here we are going to download and install our mods in. All right, uh, let's see um, but, 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 what do we need to do after that. So that's what we've done. Then I would, say, yeah, I think we can start with Mod Organizer 2. So I suggest we're going to um, use a portable version of Mod Organizer 2. And the reason for that is maybe, I think a lot of you guys actually might have already installed Skyrim Special Edition or Anniversary Edition nowadays with a current instance of Mod Organizer 2. And to make sure we're not going to interfere with that, I would say we're going to use a portable version of Mod Organizer 2. So you want to open this link up, Mod Organizer 2. And then you want to go to Files. Um, in order to have a portable version, for me, for some reason, this version does not work. I had to download this version 2.4.2, which was released at 11th of May, 2021. I'm not sure if it was just a bad coincidence or something, but. Uh, for me, this version works, so this is the version I have currently installed and it allows you to use, uh, at least I tested this one, actually allows you to use a portable version. You can download the latest version as well to try to do that, but uh, anyway, I have downloaded this version. So, why do you need to download this stuff? Well, um, like I said a little bit earlier, you want to have everything here in the, uh, everything in your folder. So, this is the first section, Essential Tools and Setups. Uh, and I number the mods in front of it as well. So your mod organizer two, I put Sarah one in front of that of, the, of our file names to have a little bit of order what we're going to install. So I would suggest you're going to do it as well. So this is our mod organizer two and let's run it as administrator. Let's accept it. And you want to install it in your created mod tools folder. So in my case, that is in my games, Steam library, Steam apps, um, common Fallout 4 modding tools. Pooh. Uh, okay. And I'm going to create a folder here. So do that as well in your case and create it MO2. Just like that. And then click on next. This should all be okay. Click next, next. Create a sh uh, desktop shortcut, next, install. And let's wait until this finishes. All right, then click on launch mod organizer. And now it will ask us to create a new instance or a portable instance, click next, and create a portable instance. Again, so this will not interfere with our current global instance. And even if you don't have a global one organized tool, always select just portable instance. It's the easiest way, I think. And then select your game, Fallout 4, click Next, click Next, and click Finish. All right, it will ask the first time to show tutorial. You don't need to do that, so click No. And here we are. This is Mod Organizer 2, so here we're going to work with from now on. Uh, close it for now because you want to rename this shortcut, Fallout 4 MO2, because else if you, uh, let's see, yeah. 
if you already have a mod organizer icon somewhere, you can make sure to separate the games from each other. So make sure you have renamed this shortcut to Fallout 4 MO2. So you know this is for Fallout 4. Great. Then we can close this. We now have Fallout 4 and we want to install the Fallout 4 script extender. So go to this page, download the uh, latest 7-zip archive. And once you've done that, you can go to the um, mods folder where you did download Fallout 4 script extender. Open up the archive with either 7-zip or WinRAR. And then let's go to your Fallout 4 main game folder. Let's do it like this open up and drag and drop everything in your Fallout 4 main game folder. It could be that it's overwriting something for me because I am, um, yeah, I did do some testing um, while I did pause the recording. So for you, it will just uh, paste it here into the main game folder. You should probably not have a message to overwrite things. So, okay, then we have done that. Then we can go back to our mod organizer. So open it up. Then click on this drop down menu. Um, okay, for me, it's already here because I did mess around with it a little bit already. What you want to do in your case is click on edit. You want to click on the plus icon, click on add from file and click this file, Fallout for script extender loader. So I'm going to cancel it, but you should add this. And then you need, you can rename this title to Fallout for script extender and double check that this binary is loading. And I press okay. And then in the drop down menu, you should see this Fallout 4 script extender option. Please note that from now on, we're only going to launch Fallout 4 with this Fallout 4 script extender. So what you can do is create a shortcut to your desktop in example, and name rename this to Fallout 4 script extender. Yeah, it's, it's fine as it is. You can change an icon if you like, but never launch it anymore with this directly via Steam. So don't launch Fallout 4, Fallout 4 launcher. Um, because uh, yeah, it will not work with the installed mods we have so far. <coughs> okay, so let's see, uh, this is what we do already. Um, this is what I just explained. Now we have Fallout 4 edits to clean our plugins. Um, I would definitely recommend this for Skyrim Special Edition, also for Fallout 4, but since we don't have that many complicated mods, I'm going to skip it for now on. Um, also, I didn't really experience much crashes and yeah, I have, what is it, 70 hours in the game. I think in 2006, I played maybe two or three hours before I threw the game away again. But the modded version I've played for at least 60 hours and I had maybe one or two crashes, but that was because I did use the quick save function, which you should definitely not use. Create new games uh, all the time. It's okay to do it, uh, you know, once, once a while to create a quick save, but I would definitely recommend use regular saves instead of quick saves with a fully modded game. If you start to experience your, your game might crash if you're going to throw a lot of mods even on my entire mod list, then it might be a good idea to clean your your plugins with Fallout 4 Edit. But for now, I'm going to skip it. So yeah, it's up to you what you like. Then we have Beth Ini to do some Ini tweaks. And the way um, this mod works is that you don't have to do all the tweaks yourself. This is a very nice handy tool to do all the tweaks for you. So open it up in a new tab. It's been hosted on the Skyrim Special Edition, but it works for Fallout 4 as well. Click on Files and download the Beth Ini standalone version. So let's see, let's go to our modded, let's uh, set this here um, to our downloaded files. So here's Beth Ini. You can open up this archive as well. And then you can go to, um, where's our main game folder, by the way? Or your modding tools. Yeah, we have actually a shortcut to here. So you can extract or drag and drop Beth Ini as well to modding tools. All right, great. It's a standalone. So in theory, you can throw it anywhere because it will detect the, uh, yeah, it's, you need to uh, provide the locations of your Fallout 4. So open it up, run it as administrator. Um, first, you want to close Mod Organizer because it will go to whine that it is open. And then run Bethini as administrator for the game. Of course, select Fallout 4. Let's see, Ben, Bethini has the ability to modify the game custom mini files. Yes, we want to do that. Or we want to give permission to do that. Then you want to go to setup 
you want to check the following paths. So game is Fallout 4. Make sure this game path is correct. Then mod organizer is not found, so you want to browse the mod organizer. Um, in my case, that's games, Steam library, Steam apps, common, Fallout 4, modding tools, mod organizer 2, and here is mod organizer. And then don't forget to change this to mod organizer default. And now it will reboot if uh, restart. Yeah. Great. That works fine. Okay. So um, did, when, once this has been set up correctly, go to basic, select ultra and select the recommended tweaks. Um, ultra settings soup should be fine with modern hardware. I know there are some areas in game, um, it, it is rare, but there are some areas which yeah, gives a little bit of stuttering sometimes and that's nothing to do really with your hardware, it's just the way the game has been optimized at some parts, but overall the game should be super smooth also with the uh, EMBs and high resolution textures. Uh, at the, if at the end of this tutorial you're still going to experience frame drops and all, you can click on high settings um, and change it to there. Yeah, that's that's uh, the only advice I can give you. For now, use ultra settings. It should be fine and it looks great. So let's see, uh, you can skip this on a general tab. Let's see, we had everything in basic, right? Yeah. Also here, disable file selection. This is a line. Um, the first time I did mod Fallout 4, I had no idea that you had to enable this. Uh, for, so first, the first thing before I knew the existence of Beth Ini, I had to do this manually. Because I downloaded an armor and I wanted to uh, to equip it, and yeah, my body was invisible all of the uh, all of a sudden, and it see and appears that you had to enable this line B enable file selection. But Beth Ini does this for you automatically, which is a great great tool, and um, because yeah, the tweaks are good, the Beth Ini presets are great as well. So a really really nice tool to use for Fallout 4 and even Skyrim Special Edition. Let's see. Then you can skip general, you can skip gameplay. Um, you can skip interface, detail then, field of view, I would change to 90 and motion blur, I would disable, I don't like that effect. Uh, depth of field and bokeh will be managed by the EMB, so you can also disable this one. God rays lens flare, um, not 100% sure if an EMB takes them over, but these are uh, optional settings as well. I actually like it, but it's, yeah, it's a little bit of a taste thing, so you can you know, um, do do yeah, activate or deactivate these. Shadow resolution you can lower to 2048. Um, yeah, that's that's more than good enough. You have these few distances. I leave them as it is. Do not touch U grids to load. I know there are some mods which uh, want you to change that. If you're really going to play the game and not screenshot or create showcases, leave it as it is because it will really mess with stability. Um, uh, for the game for in-game stuff visuals yeah this is the imax i'm ingress and the imax grass types per texture these are familiar values if you have modded skyrim before leave it as it is it's fine what's nice here if you press the refresh button you can see what beth ini will actually adjust so it's a really cool feature then you can go back to basic and press save and exit and um, that's it for beth ini Let's see, and I think also for this part actually. Yeah, that was everything for this part. So that's a good thing. We have set up our mod organizer, literally our mod organizer to manage mods. And uh, we tweak the ini settings as well. Do some preparation work, created folders. So we are good to go for the next part, part two essential mods and fixes. So hope to see you there. And um, then we will continue with our modding.